What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below, and with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Redbreast 21. Stick around. All right, so we're starting off the new year with a fancy one. I just spent the entirety of December cranking out a bunch of clickbaity end of year videos. I really milked those end of year lists, and I almost forgot that I actually, you know, review things sometimes. Turns out I do though, and after slogging through the holidays where I ate nothing but meats, cheeses, and sweets for the past two weeks and drinking nothing but fine single malts, I figured after all that hard work, I would reward myself with a nice fine single malt. Single pot. Wait, single pot still whiskey. And not just any single pot still whiskey, this one is the Redbreast 21 year old. Um, this one is a gift that I gave to myself when I turned 40 a few months back, and it should be a really nice one. Or it better be a really nice one, because it is older and fancier and expensive -er. Now, broadly speaking, I'm a huge fan of breasts, and red breasts are no exception. Uh, in the past, I've said nothing but good things about the 12-year-old cast strength and the 15-year-old, so we're hoping the 21 keeps that tradition going. Like all red breasts, this one is out of the Middleton Distillery. It's triple distilled. It's matured in both bourbon and ex-sherry casks, Oloroso sherry casks, um, malted unmalted barley. I think that's all I know about it. Now, this is one that's been recommended to me many, many times over the years, whether it's online, in the comments, or just from friends. I hear it's nothing short of spectacular. I've even heard people say that this is better than the 27-year-old release, which is matured in uh, port casks, I believe. Um, I wouldn't know. I've never tried that one, and given the price, I probably never will. But all that sounds very promising. Anyway, let's find out if I really came through on my gift to myself, or if I end up disappointed in myself, as I often do. Uh, so let's jump into our review. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. All right, for our specs, this one comes in at 46%. I'm not sure if it's colored or chill filtered because they don't really tell us. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say no on the chill filtration, yes on the added color. But if you know any different, you can let me know down below. So I do like the look of these red breast bottles, especially since they revamped the range a while back. The old bottles looked like this. Uh, the new ones, I think, are both somewhat modern and somewhat traditional at the same time. They're not outstanding or anything, but they do look nice. I'll give them four out of five. As I mentioned earlier, this one does not say if it's colored or chill filtered. Uh, we do get some tasting notes. It does mention the sherry casks that were used and it says it's triple distilled. Not a lot of information. We get a few of the basics. We could use a little bit more. Bottle looks nice. On the nose, this is a classic red breast, which means we get lots of butterscotch, lots of caramel. There's also plenty of orchard fruits in here, very juicy orchard fruits, candied orchard fruits. We get stuff like apples, peaches, there's mango in here even, there's some sweet berry notes, there's some Concord grapes, and there's also some gentle graininess, some minerality, some pepper, and some light oaky notes. Really nice nose. The palette and finish is beautifully rich with a very velvety texture. We get caramel and wood up front. We also get fruit syrup. There's butterscotch. There's buttered pastry crust. There's orange oil. There's black pepper. We get a medium finish on grain, minerals, butter, green apple, and some lingering oranges, apricots, and peaches. All right, so this whiskey is absolutely delicious. I think if you're a fan of stuff like the 12, 12 cast strength, 15, if you like the spot whiskeys, if you're a fan of anything out of the Middleton Distillery in general, you're gonna like this one. Unlike me, this is extremely easy to like. One thing to note though here, and I do think I've mentioned this before, is that if you buy older whiskeys because you really wanna delve into like subtlety and nuance and delicacy, this might not be the ideal 21 year old for you. And that's because it's got that classic red breast butterscotch note that kind of envelops and wraps around a lot of the other flavors. Personally, I like it. It's a warm blanket of butterscotch, but it might shroud some of the nuance if that's something that you're really looking for. By the way, I just realized that a warm blanket of butterscotch is probably not my best analogy. It sounds very gooey or very hard. Not blanket material at all. Anyway, stupid tangent. Going back to what I was saying a second ago, uh, it's not the most delicate or nuanced 21 year old whiskey out there, but that's not to say there is no nuance or delicacy in here. There is some, and after 21 years, uh, our flavors are very integrated. 
it is a sophisticated whiskey. And as I touched on earlier, it's also a very familiar whiskey. If you've had the rest of the Redbreast line, if you've had some of the younger expressions, then none of these flavors are going to surprise you. What they are is just kind of an older and more integrated extension of those same flavors. It is more refined though. This whiskey is beautifully balanced, is beautifully structured, as is the rest of the line. I would say the biggest difference between those younger expressions and the 21 year old here is texture. Especially on the arrival, the texture in this stuff is velvety, it's rich, it's mouth coating. Uh, I mentioned butter as one of the main tasting notes in this, but you could also say the texture itself is quite buttery. Another thing that I like here, and I like it across the Redbreast line, is the sherried influence because uh, you guys might know I'm a little bit sensitive to things that are too sherried. If we have too much active cask in the mix, it kind of overwhelms the distillate and it just kind of takes over in terms of flavor. That doesn't happen here. The sherry is definitely there. I would even call them quite sherry forward whiskeys, but they are somewhat restrained. Still, they manage to be exceptionally fruity. If I were to try and sum up this profile, I would say imagine a plate. On that plate, you've got some sliced apples, sliced orchard fruits, sprinkled in cinnamon and sugar. You've got a slice of apple pie. You've got a berry turnover, uh, and you've got a pile of Werther's Originals. Breakfast of Champions. And yet, despite all that, not overly sweet. Uh, this one is just so, so good. Like, I can't imagine someone not liking this. I can imagine someone saying this isn't the best whiskey in the world. But I think whether you're an enthusiast, uh, an intermediate, a beginner, whatever, no one's going to have this and be like, that's disgusting, that's awful whiskey. Everyone's going to at least like this. This stuff is rich, it's balanced, it's robust, and most importantly, this is just a very satisfying whiskey. So aside from not being the most nuanced 21 year old in the world, I'm struggling to find anything I don't like about this stuff. And since it's got that mass appeal, you're probably going to like this stuff too. Uh, initially when I first got it, I think I scored it something like 89, uh, but it's grown on me a little bit since then, and I'm going to score this one a 90. I think it breaks the 90 barrier. It's fantastic stuff. Although, it's not cheap. So, is this one worth the money? Uh, the answer to that question is going to depend on you and where you live because the prices, the international prices for this bottle vary wildly. Uh, I did pretty well for myself here in Taiwan. Uh, I paid about 180 US or roughly 140 pounds for this. And even though that is still quite expensive for me, I do feel like I got my money's worth. However, a lot of the really big international retailers out of the UK have this listed much, much higher. Uh, they have it listed at roughly 240 pounds, which is a full hundred pounds more than what I paid, which I think is wild. Is it worth that much? No, it isn't. So I hope you can find this for a much better price than that. And if you do, certainly grab it because it is excellent whiskey, especially if you're a big Redbreast fan. But yeah, I mean, good luck with the prices. All right, so that'll be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help out the channel, I do have the Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, subscribe, the usual. Uh, and I do want to hear from you. Have you tried the Redbreast 21? How do you feel it lines up against the rest of the range? Do you feel you got your money's worth? How much did you pay for it? You can let me know all of that down below. And um, that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.